Welcome to another ride along with goggles and uh, we're sitting in the truck this time because uh, I wanted to check something out. I uh, don't know if I checked it before in this truck. It's the Pizder 389 and um, it's got uh, gauges on the dash here. Let me uh, zoom in on them. Right there it says suspension load one and two. Uh, kind of in the middle of the cluster in the middle row and that's the air pressure that's going to be put on the suspension when uh, we load up and we'll turn the ignition on see what it says right now so it's reading about I don't know 37 38 pounds oh, no wait a minute not that high 27 pounds maybe uh, PSI so let's uh, let's load the trailer and see what happens to that oh yeah <laughs> it went way up and we're at about 128, 129 PSI, so that's heavy. And the load is 52,000 pounds, so that's pretty cool. I like that. So real quickly, um, there's the load. This is the trailer. It's a work in progress. This is a, a sneak peek uh, from Pizder. And uh, we got uh, Helm herbicide on here. And there's one, there's another load you can get that's stacked, like on the on the main deck, the lower the drop, there's a double stack. So I imagine what that weighs about 88, 89,000. I don't know, quite a bit. And um, that's super cool. So I was looking for a heavy load, so I put a triaxle on it, and there's options. And it's good with 22 and a half inch rims, he says, is the actual, like step decks usually have 17 and a halfs. And he patterned this weight after one with 22 and a half. So what I got here is I got the retro low profile 22 and a half tires. And I got the Smarties 22 and a half uh, old style Alcoas on there for a uh, wheel tire combo in the back. So it's a mix. <laughs> it's interesting that the retro tires fit on the Smarties rims. Uh, but uh, and then the truck, I've got the uh, prism paint job on it from, uh, you know, this is that uh, owner operator dude in uh, Idaho that I, I copied this paint job from picture of his truck I saw on a show. So anyway, let's, uh, oh, let's get this thing started up and head out with our 52,000 pounds right on the dot. We're in uh, Butte, Montana, and we're heading for uh, Grangeville, Idaho, heading to this truck's home state. So I had to weigh on the way in, and that's kind of cool uh, when you, uh, I like that, weigh into a yard. And down here on the left, there's a weigh scale over there in that building. And my tear weight, or the, you know, the weight of the truck and trailer unloaded was 36,000, I think 36,100 or something. So the trailer's not a light one. Be cool if they weighed you on the way out. Oh, they, oh, they are awesome. Oh, that's cool. I've never had it work like that before here. I'll read it out because it's probably behind this. Eighty-eight, two thousand. Yeah, that's right. That's fifty-two thousand because there's thirty-six coming in. Nice. I love it. Super cool. I don't know if I'm happy about my seating position anymore now that I, <laughs> I uh, reset the uh, Toby. I had the steering wheel all set up for that uh, position it was in.
Minnesota is talking the other day about the uh, we're driving the um, LTL 9000 as mentioning uh, the gauge on the left of the steering wheel or the uh, tack where I'd set up my own air pressure stuff that's what you could tell with it and you get a handle because people weren't always honest with me about the load they're putting on and uh, oh yeah it only weighs so much or whatever and they, you know, they're trying to get you to take too much and so with that uh, you learn to read what the air pressure equates to in pounds and then uh, you know if you got to go uh, around the scale <laughs> So quite a few times, I get in the truck and spark it up and air it up and I would be heavy. So uh, my solution is just go around the scale instead of arguing about it. Uh, we got the um, Z Max DD60 in here. Oh, went out a little wide there. Highways department's going to be coming after me for a, a marker. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to watch that on this trip because um, 309 inch chassis on the truck and uh, 53 foot trailer with. Uh, set axles so we're not exactly uh, in the high maneuverability bracket here I saw an old Airstream trailer up there. It's not. I guess I got to start uh, working on that uh, weekend convoy of uh, Cappies. The one with uh, all the vintage stuff and 80s advertising and no modern traffic. That's going to be awesome.
Well, I hope everybody's going to, uh, has got a good Easter planned and, uh, time with family and have an enjoyable long weekend, uh, for those who get it. That would be nice. This truck uh, drives pretty nice. Steering feels good. Sure wish I knew what it was or where the uh, mod file contains all that stuff. Not, no, this is <laughs> a locked mod. Not that I could do anything about it, but I guess it'd be kind of fun to play around with. See if you can get a mod that's not not locked and see what you can do to affect the handling, steering, whatever. coming up here it looks like keep right after 50 yards exit right ahead exit right ahead keep left after 50 yards turn left Kind of looking for a trip that would go up Highway 20 again, but uh, I think we've taken that one more recently than this trip. So, thought, yeah, ah, this is pretty good too. Gets to be a bit of a challenge at uh, a few points along the way. For uh, like I say, with this uh, combination, so it should keep us on our toes. For me, I guess. You guys on the edge of your seat, maybe. <laughs> uh, Well, I did a, I uh, wanted to do a different skin for this truck for this trip, but I, you know, I thought, uh, well, I don't have a lot of time because I finished that, uh, spent half the day doing that W900 skin for uh, SCS, the Montana Express one I just put up. So, right. After 50 yards, turn right. Turn right. so I didn't get to the, um, I didn't have much time, 
So what I did is I thought, well, let's make a changeable paint skin. I thought that Seminole style skin that I made the, uh, into, you know, I made, well, the black swan skin, I made it from scratch. But um, it's got that Seminole style to it. And I thought, well, that'd be a cool one to make paintable. So I went to all the trouble of making it a paintable paint job. And then when I go to paint it, the base color is flat. There's no, no gloss to the base color. I guess it's something to do with this truck. So I'll have to get a hold of Pister Modding and just see if there's, I don't know, if there's something they plan on changing in the future or whatever, because it's super cool to do some changeable paint jobs for this. Like that Winslow Stripe one would look epic on here. But you know, if you can't have a bit of gloss on your paint, kind of a bummer. But the, the, you know, okay, so the base color is not gloss, but the other three colors that you can paint. So the overall paint job, the big color, it's going to be flat, and the other three colors have some gloss, which is actually looks weird. Imagine you could use it to your advantage and make something cool out of it uh, with a different paint job, but not that Seminole one. Oh boy, should have been looking further ahead. Go. That should be the last light for a while. get called into this way station. They don't wait too long to let us know before the traffic gets up here. Here's the trigger here. Oh, good. It's over there in the kitty corner to this traffic light in that parking lot up ahead. Go straight. That's kind of a bummer. Keep right. So straight ahead is that uh, re really cool road to uh, Salmon. It's a pretty neat drive. I'll show you on the map. We've been on it a few times. This is the one I was thinking I wanted to take. So we're here. We're going this way to Grangeville. If you go down here, this is a really neat drive right here. Then you get down to the park entrance and you turn down this uh, 93 here. It's a cool drive. Oh, wait a minute, I'm taking a 20 over here. It's my bad, sorry. Jeez, that road. Hmm, got to get on it again. I forget, now that's how messed up I am right now. Don't even know where I am. So we can look at the load a little bit. See, how, you know, he's got it all uh, nicely tied down. Good detail on, this, on the straps. The uh, nylon webbing straps. Pretty good. And they're, they're all portable straps. That's interesting. No sliders. Like the ratchet assembly is done like a portable. So if you remember in John Ruda's trailer where they're all the, the wind-up uh, sliders, like the uh, ratchet mechanism slides up and down a rail on the side of the trailer. 
and uh, that's pretty convenient. But on this trailer, you wouldn't have sliders going over those wheels. You see, you'd have to have fixed ones in between. And I guess with the hooks, you get a little bit more um, movement in where you're going to put them. Some loads are really particular on where you're going to put a strap. Like I mentioned before, one of the least favorite... I had two loads I hated. Well, okay, three. <laughs> uh, one of them was uh, spooling, which is the piping that goes in uh, pressure... Uh, um, oh, what do you call it? Compressor skids, like uh, compressor shacks in the oil field, and they have all this piping. And you know, it's not just the only place. That was the most common place for what I did. And uh, it's like flange. It's got a flange on the end that bolts onto another flange, and just that big round, thick flange with all the holes in it. You see all the time in oil field stuff or high pressure. And, uh, but it's bent all crazy because it's meant to go inside these compressor station and it's all pre-built to go where it's got to go and they, they kind of break it down. They don't make any pieces any bigger than they can fit on a truck. But you get the weirdest shapes and angles and things sticking up and it's a mess. And to try and tie that stuff down on a flat deck, like, it's just... It's nuts. And it's difficult to load because it's all out of balance and all. You can't just pick it up and it's like all of the most awkward shapes. So that's one load I didn't like. The other load I didn't like was scaffolding. If you're picking it up from a construction site, if you're taking it to a construction site, it's usually all banded, banded together and you load it up with a forklift. It's not terrible. You pick it up and it's all loose and you got to stack it and then tie it down in such a way that it doesn't doesn't take off on you that's a bummer and then my third least favorite was pink insulation that fiberglass pink there's a trick with that stuff because it's so compressible that when you put your strap over it, it's stacking, they stack it really high, like right up to the, you know, as high as they can legally go. And you get your strap over it. And if you, um, like I knew all the yards where I go to pick it up and the guys cooperate with me and I get them to. So if you're looking at it from the back, you get your, your base load, your base level, then the next level and the next, next. And because it'd be tightening it or tying it on from the left, just like this load, I would get them to put it gradually every every level further to the right so before I tie it down the whole load's leaning all the way over to the right and so it'd be like it looked like it was going to fall over but you would uh, when you tighten it down it all comes back straight because the, the strap sinks so far into the load you know the top ones are getting squashed and it just comes back straight so as soon as I learned that trick it wasn't as bad, but when I was a rookie, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Well, I nobody told me that. I just figured it out. And uh, but yeah, it's it's painful. Like a lot of dicking around just for something like pink insulation. It doesn't weigh anything. Well, much. It's got to weigh something, but not a good load. I kind of liked forklifts. So on a flat deck, you back up to the dock, you drive them on, and you tie them down, you get to the other end, you untie them, and you drive them off. <laughs> Real nice. But stuff like this is, uh, this is a good load because uh, it's not compressible. So it doesn't do weird stuff on you. 
I didn't mind pipe uh, or um, that uh, plastic PVC pipe was always pretty good because it usually loaded in crates or it's all it's not loose because I mean you don't be <laughs> you're not picking that up again you take it to the site wherever it's going and it goes in the ground and uh, so you're never gonna see it again that's nice Crap. At the scale. Wait, where is it? Way scale ahead. Turn left. Yeah, sorry, Lori, but uh, we'll be back. See, the trailer's probably still gonna. How do we do? Ah, not bad. That's good. See how this drives now? We used a bit of gas, must be down, or diesel, should be down to 87,000 or so. Let's see. Yeah, 87, 830. <laughs> Oops, jeez, I so used to leaving my left foot on the floor <laughs> to put the clutch in. That's how it was on a really long trip. You just never move your left leg and uh, other than, well, my truck, the dimmer switch is on the floor. <laughs> that would be it. You go hours and hours and hours and hours and never moving your left leg. and <laughs> It's kind of weird when you have to. Just missed that guardrail. Okay, so this is this interesting road coming up, I think. Let's see. Go straight. Oh, I guess that was it. We were on the... Well, there's some curvy bits here. Looks like we're on uh, quite a bit of curvy stuff back there. Oops. That, um, I wanted to hit this button. So that, uh, this all came along in 146, this area we're in right here. It was all part of Montana, I think. I was thinking of or not good good ones to meet traffic on on the right handers in this little section here but this looks like the last of it or maybe not <laughs> there's another one up there that's a left uh, in the direction we're going so in this trailer I don't know what's gonna happen when uh, it goes into production, but for now, it's got a ton of really, really cool loads. There's uh, some steel beams. There's a small load of steel beams, and there's big ones. They look awesome. And the chains and the boomers, like tying it down, are all really, really nicely done. And there's, um, man, all kinds of loads. There's this one, and then a stacked one. There's lumber loads that look like cedar. Then there's lumber loads that look like pine, and then there's mixed loads. And um, what else? There's, uh, I believe there's uh, a couple road rollers, one load. Uh, it looks kind of cool. And 
Lots of lots of really good loads. Little mini excavators that look pretty neat. And uh, some of them are the loads. The excavators are in need of a bath. Oh, here's that crazy intersection. Turn right. Behind us, nobody. Hopefully we don't knock out another sign here. But, but I was going to say, oh yeah, the other thing is um, Pizner included um, the KSW open def for the lights. So I was able to use that and put uh, KSW lights on it. They got reverse lights and brake, and they even made the little middle ones break. And I put a little signal on the, uh, should be on the, yeah, right there on the outside and on the side there. It's all pretty cool. So I don't know if when it goes in production, you're just going to include those notes ready to go. And you won't need that open def to make the lights work. I mean, what a nice combination to drive this truck and trailer. And of course, he's, uh, you know, he's uh, on top of that pretty philanthropic guy or whatever. He's sponsoring our photo contest every month on our Discord, which is awful nice of him. Like, I mean, how many guys do that? I can't thank anybody else. I'm super uh, pleased with that, and uh, you know, got to give him a shout out because that gives a lot of value to our Discord and the people who take part and win that photo contest. That's pretty cool, and we get to see some fantastic photos because the guys really work for it. They really, they really put out some nice work. If for no other reason, you got right. you got to drop by the Discord and look at the photo contest photos. I got to be real good and be impartial. So when I go in, like I can't, you have reached your destination. I can't be, you know, I don't make comments or anything. I just go and look and get out. At the end of the month, I tally it up and then I get to say something about it. So see all the, oh wow, there's not a lot of uh, room up front. Okay, could be interesting. Well, as we got a pretty long setup here, I think we're gonna come, we're gonna try it. Coming from in here, I think I need to get a bit of angle. I'm gonna go over that little curb. Get every bit of angle we can early on here. I don't want the truck over too far, we'll get ourselves in trouble. <laughs> oh, we're way inside the line there. Uh oh, we're gonna hit something? Gonna get awful close to that wall. <laughs> Kinda like to be able to back it away from that wall a little bit. Just get those. Get, yeah, a little late on my turn. Oops, I turned the wrong way. Yeah, we, we might uh, not even be able to trigger the load here. We were so late getting the, oh, we did. 
Ah, oh, it's messy, man. Let's just straighten it up a bit. At least a little bit. Don't leave it like that. It's a little bit better. Okay. Here we are. So there's quite a few options for the uh, truck as well. Um, or the trailer, rather. And, uh, yeah, we'll look at some of them. We'll get the load off, I'll show you. Uh, how we do? Oh, that was good pay, 27, 729. Great. Oh, it's dark. Oh, how come the trailer lights are on still? That's weird. They kind of have a little glow. Interesting. Anyway, I was just going to... Uh, oops. Good detail on this truck, too. Like, look at this. The pipe and the, you know, the flex pipe and everything in there. Diffs. Oops. I got it. Got it going pretty fast. You shot out right out the, the other side of the freaking building. There we go. So you can have a pine deck or a light colored deck. That looks like, well, it wouldn't be pine. It would be fir or oak. One of the two. Fir is very common. That's what I used. But, um, yeah, let's see if we can get down a little lower here. So good detail under there. Good detail on the air back and uh, all the airbags and stuff these are the uh, the signal setup that I put on from uh, KSW there's lights Wade yeah good looking trailer nice uh, winding mechanism in there good detail on that very nice Look at that gross vehicle weight rating 80,000. Ooh, we're over <laughs> 88. Yeah, rims 22.5 right there. FMCSA rated high tensile seal, do not cut welder drill. The frame flange, yeah, it's nice stuff. Oh, the other thing about Pister's truck is uh, watch this. I do something here. Uh, let's um, couple the trailer. See the fifth wheel. It's like that. That's where a fifth wheel is in travel. Normally, it's tilted back like that so that uh, you can get under the trailer. It's like a natural ramp. And so when you, uh, it's the only truck I know of out there that does that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of a little more realistic. Anyway, um, gotta leave it there, guys. So thanks for following along as always. Really appreciate it, and uh, looking forward to seeing this trailer come out on the uh, on the market. That would be a good thing, and uh, I always enjoy driving the truck. So thanks, to Eric, for that, and um, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care, and uh, bye for now.